Blair came to South Africa specifically to lobby the BAE, the British weapons manufacturer, won the biggest contract on our arms deal. And the option that they presented was two and a half times more expensive than the plane that the South African Air Force actually wanted. BAE Systems. Real performance. Real advantage. As Mandela was about to step down from public life, his successor, Thabo Mbeki, made the decision to spend around $10 billion, what were quite scarce public resources, on this weaponry that we didn't need, rather than provide life-saving medication for the almost 6 million South Africans who were then living with HIV or AIDS. The primary reason for those deals was that around $300 million in bribes were paid to senior politicians, and sadly to the African National Congress, the ANC, my own party. I was called in by a senior member of the ANC's National Executive Council. He said to me, look, Andrew, this is a battle you cannot win because this money, the bribes, were used to fund our 1999 election. And almost immediately, I'm asked to make a statement to the press that says there's nothing to investigate. So it's all over. And I looked at him and I said, no, it's not. I won't be able to live with myself if I stop this investigation. But at the same time, I'm also realizing that this is the end of my political career. The heads of government are the salespeople in chief of their country's large arms contractors. And this is the template used by large defense contractors around the world. Companies like BAE are not only sort of effectively part of the government, but they're effectively above the law. Corruption is not merely a dirty little detail on top of the arms trade. It's actually, in a lot of cases, what drives the international arms trade. Many of these deals would not happen if they did not provide opportunities for personal enrichment. I would be offended if I thought we had a monopoly on corruption. J.P. Morgan paid him off for the Iraq war. Three months after we invaded Iraq, he held up the Iraq bank for 20 billion. He was then paid six million dollars every year. The man is a war criminal. As I was being dragged out, I thought, right at the last second, I'm going to still say, remind everyone that this guy's a war criminal. Can I just say, actually, on the record, what he said about Iraq and J.P. Morgan is completely and totally untrue. I've never had a discussion with them. Now, I'm not suggesting that there was a phone call between J.P. Morgan and Blair. It was actually what happened was J.P. Morgan and a consortium of other banks did, in fact, prop up the whole Iraq economy to the tune of about two and a half billion, not 20 billion. I was a bit nervous that day. Then, six months after he left office, Blair suddenly signed by J.P. Morgan for $5 million every year. I was just trying to enlighten the public that there was corruption involved and not just bad decision-making. I'd like to find out how this gentleman managed to access the court. There must be a back door in, because they'd all gone out for tea at the time, and there was a courtroom directly underneath the courtroom that the player was in, and it was left unlocked. So I went through that run, up two floors via the fire escape, and then to the, to the door of the, the court itself. By this time, my heart was pounding like a, you know, it was really going mad, and I actually lost my courage for the moment. So I went and sat down in a, in a bathroom, I found a uh, gent's toilet there, I did actually ring my mother and said, listen, I'm here, what should I do? Do you think I should still go in? And my mum said, yeah, go on, you won't get another chance. And I thought, that's it, I'm in. The man is a war criminal! Augustine said that hope has two beautiful daughters, anger and courage. Anger at the way things are and courage to see that they don't remain the way they are. You can serve two sets of principles, privilege and power or justice and truth. 
The more you make compromises with those who serve privilege and power, the more you diminish the capacity for justice and truth. And I think that the rebel seeks to keep those who have power fearful.